No one will be held accountable for robo-debt. They should be. But they won't. Let me explain to you why. Firstly, a quick rundown on the evil shitfuckery that was robo-debt. Centrelink has done data matching on welfare overpayments for decades. But the government introduced three very special ingredients into the compliance mix that turned this process into institutionalised cruelty on an industrial scale. Firstly, they introduced income averaging. The Australian Tax Office's tax data is generally collated at an annual level. You'll be familiar with this from doing your tax return. Centrelink's payments are made on a fortnightly basis, so they averaged people's annual incomes over the 26 fortnights of a year and then compared it to their Centrelink payments and surprise! The system concluded that people had been overpaid. Secondly, they reversed the onus of proof. Previously, a Centrelink officer would investigate and make sure a debt was actually incurred before issuing a debt notice. Now, it was up to the welfare recipient to prove they did not owe the debt. And if they couldn't, they had to pay it. A lot of these debts ran into thousands of dollars, issued to people with little to no income. Thirdly, and this is where the evil really takes off, they automated the process and removed all human oversight. Previously, Centrelink was issuing roughly 20,000 debt notices a year. Now it was issuing 20,000 debt notices a week. The worst part is that most of these debts didn't exist. They were complete fabrications due to the flawed logic in the income averaging process. Over 2,000 people died after receiving robo-debt notices. At least four families are confident that their loved ones took their lives because of the stress and the anguish the robo-debt process caused them. Instead of clawing back more than $3 billion with this process, as the government forecast in several budgets, they ended up settling a class action lawsuit for $1.2 billion. On top of that, there's the legal fees, admin costs and all the debts they cancelled before they got sued by the class action. And this little adventure in cruelty and punching down has cost the government upwards of $2 billion. So who's responsible for this? Well, it's not Stuart Robert, although he's currently the minister in charge of this clusterfuck. It's not Alan Tudge or Christian Porter of Four Corners Misogyny fame, although they were the ministers who implemented the scheme in 2016. No, the architect behind this obscenity of government policy is our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. He was Social Services Minister when the scheme was conceived and decisions were made. When Christian Porter was implementing the scheme, Morrison was the treasurer and looking to save money to get the budget back into surplus. And the person who wanted to make sure he went to the 2019 election with a guaranteed budget surplus was Prime Minister Scott Morrison. The reason no one will be held accountable for this is that the Prime Minister is present at every stage of portfolio responsibility at the heart of what happened with robo-debt. And as we all know, he doesn't take responsibility for anything. He doesn't hold a hose, he doesn't hold a swab, and he certainly won't resign over a program that his government, in its settlement of the class action lawsuit levelled against it, refused to accept legal liability for.